Hi, welcome to this special Twinsburg Schools Today program. I'm Dennis Sahetka from Community Focus, and today is a discussion on the Tiger Legacy Project. And here with us, Superintendent Kathy Powers. Kathy, Hi, Dennis. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. Hey, thanks for coming in. This is uh, an exciting time. Um, we have a lot to go through. And before we get to the Tiger Legacy Project, I want to make one mention. I watched the school board meeting. Exciting news or bad news, depending on what you're looking at, but there was big news happening at the school board meeting. Right. Well, the big news is that the district has now pivoted to mask optional status. This is after two years of, of course, a mask mandate. Um, the time is right to move the district forward. We're excited uh, to be where we are today. Learned a lot of lessons, know a lot more about COVID than we could have ever imagined, but I was in the buildings this morning and this afternoon, and everyone's feeling great about the change. Uh, we have a number of students and staff members that are continuing to wear their masks, and that's absolutely fine. Um, it's about choice, and uh, happy that we're just moving the district forward. Well, and that's the big thing. It's choice. Whatever you decide, it's right for you leave it at that and today we're taping actually this program on the day after uh, President's Day right. this is the first day of the of the uh, optional mask mandate correct all right well good luck with uh, with that so the Tiger Legacy project is it, it goes back a ways so in 2019 the district introduced the conceptual legacy project right. and that was kind of um, a plan that wanted to look at how best to address the future of, of buildings and, and facilities in Twinsburg, um, as well as get community input and find out what residents wanted. So um, take us back to the beginning, which actually goes back to 2016. Uh, bring us up to date to where we are now and what prompted the name change. Right. So in 2016, uh, we conducted what we call a facilities assessment using the assistance of Lesko Architects and Karpinski Engineering took a hard look at all of the district's buildings and grounds trying to figure out where our strengths were and then obviously where we have some deficiencies. Um, that work was then followed by um, in that place and time the beginning of the focus group effort aligned to our district strategic plan and so one of the plans areas has to do with facilities and so it was appropriate that we would pull together a group of community members and business owners and staff members and administrators to talk about the district's facilities. Out of that work of the facilities action team grew the first look at our conceptual legacy project. And as you know, Dennis, you were part of um, all of our work about the PR trying to push out the news about this huge undertaking. And it was a chance for us to dream big. What if you could think about the way you perceived our district should look like, not just for the students who are students in our classrooms today, but for those future Tigers, what would, what would you suggest that look like? And it became a rather large project with a pretty large price tag attached to it. Well, and, and since that time, so that was beginning of 2019, you rolled that out. We all know what happened the beginning of 2020. Right. COVID craziness hit. We didn't hear very much about the plan, but that's not to say that you weren't still doing many things behind the scenes to prepare for this. So talk about the change to the Tiger legacy and you know, this is, this is now pared way down based on information that you got in your phone surveys and, and things that, that, that data collection that you did in the, in the public. Right, it was actually before March of 2020. March of 2020 is a great marker in time and that was the beginning of the pandemic as we know it. But in February, the board contracted with Fallon Associates, it's an, um, a marketing firm, I believe out of the Columbus area, that did a community phone survey asking our residents about their thoughts regarding the conceptual legacy project. What do you know about it? Um, is it too broad in scope? Uh, would you support a bond issue associated with this conceptual legacy project. And we learned a couple of lessons from the feedback we received in February of 20. This was right before the pandemic. And first of all, only 26% of the residents who participated in the phone survey even had an idea as to what the conceptual legacy project was. 
and it made us pause because we had been out nearly every night of the week talking to all kinds of groups. You helped us videotape a show uh, for, for this um, uh, venue. You know, we had it in a newspaper. We were talking to city government and the village government and the township government. And for whatever reason, uh, the word just didn't get out. So that was a little bit of a, a stop in time, right? You know, boy, all that communication that didn't work. The next thing that we did glean from the survey results uh, was the fact that there was um, a support to do something with George G. Dodge Intermediate School. Uh, for residents who've been here a long time and who've had the fortune of being inside Dodge, whether for your own children or for you maybe as students, understand that the space inside that building really isn't conducive to our 21st century learners. Classrooms are small, HVAC isn't great, windows don't open, issues with doors, lots of lots of issues. And so the phone survey really talked about, yeah, we'll support something with Dodge, and we support a lot of other things. We talked about preschool expansion. We talked about a partnership with the library. Um, lots of support for all those things until the price tag was attached to it. And then the residents thought, okay, it's a little bit more than I can um, afford at this time, so yeah, probably I can't support the project. So fast forward, March 2020 happens, the pandemic becomes all that we were involved in for the last two years. But on the back burner, our buildings are aging, facilities don't look as great as they once did, and so we know as a school organization that it's time, it's time to do something with our facilities. And so we didn't want this to be a conceptual anymore, a concept, and so through the work of the Facilities Action Team, the name has now changed to the Tiger Legacy Project, talking about the tigers of today, but also talking about those tigers that we haven't even met yet. And what kind of facilities do we aspire for those students to be able to learn in? What kind of a learning environment will support them so that they can be their very best and successful selves? So what did you take away from the survey and what did you feel that residents were committed to doing? I mean, it wasn't that long ago, we just had community support to build a new high school. So we know the residents of Twinsburg support the district and support education. Um, so what did you get from that? Um, and you know, what did those grand plans that started out, what did that sort of get uh, whittled down to? Well, I think what you say is very true. Um, our residents have always supported the schools. We're blessed by that. Um, I think that the residents understand that how a school district goes, so, so do the communities that support those, that school district. And so we are very grateful for the support from our community over a long time. Um, but when you're asking to pass a bond issue or, or whether it's a renewal levy or a new money issue, you know you're asking the residents to take something out of their pocket to support our kids. And so it's not an easy ask. And it was something that came forth in the, in the phone survey that folks were concerned about making sure that if they say yes, that they can actually support it out of their own you know, personal pocketbook. So the financial consideration was great. Um, but really the focus from the survey is about Dodge. And it's also about making sure that we are continuing to support environments that are warm, safe, and dry. Um, we talked a lot this past two years about the safety related to a pandemic, but there's more to safety and health than just that. You know, making sure that HVAC is good uh, for the learning environment, making sure that we have cameras, making sure that the district's radios are working, that one building can communicate through to the next with the district radios. All those things, all those parts and pieces were supported by the residents in the phone survey. And so those are the things that we would like to focus on moving forward. Well, one of the most interesting things, and I have watched the PowerPoint and gone through it, one of the most interesting things and, and most striking things that stands out to me is the cost of maintaining Dodge. I mean, that facilities assessment went through, you know, what you were going to have to to renovate or, or what you were going to have to um, pay for in the next five to ten years. And when you looked at just the cost of maintaining, Dodge stood out like a sore thumb. Yeah, so it's actually more expensive to do nothing than it is to actually build a new school. If you think about it, cost over time. Um, the architects at the time that this was done estimated that it was a $29.7 million investment just to keep the building maintained. And that doesn't say anything about upgrades. It doesn't say anything about renovating space. It's just keeping the train on the track so that we can keep the doors open and the lights on. 
And honestly, that's a huge investment for getting basically nothing on the other end of things. Well, and architects, and Nordonia Hills is going through a similar thing right now, and architects will tell you that there is, you know, the, the two-thirds rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. So talk to, t t talk to the residents about what that means. Right. So the cost of building a new school, a new three-grade level building, is about $38.6 million. So when you think about um, it, whether we just maintain or whether we renovate, the cost associated with that would far exceed the two-thirds rule. So basically what that would mean is it's a better investment to build the new complex than it is to put money against something that isn't going to get any younger, that isn't going to provide the best environment for the students that, that, te that learn there, or the teachers that support the staff, or all the classified staff members that support learning every day at Dodge. And so that's the rule that we uh, have been talking a lot about. It's actually a better investment to the taxpayers' dollars to be able to talk about a new construction project here for a three-grade building. Well, it's just interesting that it's almost $30 million just to maintain Dodge. Mm -hmm. It's $34 million to renovate it just right. to get it up to speed. And we'll talk later about the money to, to build a new one, but it's it's the, the cost of renovation, the cost of maintaining is over two thirds. Right, Ooh. and you know, it's, it, it's more than Dodge, I suppose, too, and we're talking about warm, safe, and dry. And I use this example all the time. The district, thankfully, a number of years ago, had been supported by a permanent improvement issue that was passed by the residents that provides for the district between $1.8 and $2 million a year that we use for capital improvements. There's a road that runs from the front of Twinsburg High School all the way, it's a loop that runs all the way to the other side of RB Chamberlain Middle School. We call it Tiger Trail. That road is owned by the Board of Education. That road is in dire need of a pavement job. That road alone will cost the board a million dollars to replace. So you th it's very expensive and those are the things that are currently uh, on our watch, something that has to has to happen here in the short term. I, I jokingly tell folks when I'm explaining this to them, um, you know, for Twins Days, I, I drive the golf cart between the festival and the high school parking lot. You passed me by uh, about 30 <laughs> times. Do. This I do. And last August, when it w we were doing this Twins Day event, driving the golf cart on Tiger Trail, <laughs> I felt like I was on some kind of ride at Cedar Point because between the potholes and the speed bumps, it was, it was, it was quite bumpy. So it is time, but my point here is that, you know, 1.8 to $2 million is the permanent improvement amount we get annually, thanks to that um, issue that was passed by the residents. But a million of that has to go against repaving that long road. And so there isn't a lot of extra money in the bank to put forth even to maintain or to renovate based on what we know today. Right, so based on the stats that you have gathered uh, that we're looking at here in this PowerPoint, at least to me, it seems to make good sense to build new. So mm -hmm. you have decided to, to propose a plan um, that would be in a couple of different phases. Talk about the plan itself and why you chose to do multiple phases. Right, and, and it goes again to the information that we learned from our phone survey from February of 20. And that is the initial conceptual legacy project was just so broad in scope and very expensive at the same time too. We knew that after receiving the results of the survey, um, the residents were being cautious to say we can support it, it's just too big at this time. So we started to focus on what is the most important thing and at this moment in time the most important thing is to do something with George G. Dodge Intermediate School because that building no longer really supports what we need to see happen for today's learners. And so um, going back to the drawing board, taking a look at the entirety of the conceptual legacy project and trying to now focus it into phases, phase one really focuses upon how do we get that new school built, this three grade level building. And part of the issue is, sure, we're gonna build a new building. Those kids have to go to school while you're building a new building. So yeah. we need to talk about a site for that building. What makes the most sense? And you have decided on a site or, or, or you're, you are uh, suggesting a site, and that is the site of the current Tiger Stadium, 
and moving that. So there would be an additional cost to building a new three grade level school and that would be the cost of moving the stadium. Right. And again, we're in the phase of let's talk to the community, let's engage them to see if this is the idea that they can support, right? So as you said, phase one talks about George G. Dodge Intermediate School and where can you build it. It currently sits off of Ravenna Road, as we know. Um, the board has limited property that they own and limited in the sense that most of what the board owns, there's a facility or, or something, an athletic field up on it. So what can we do to accommodate a new building? So first question is, do we just build a new building on the campus of Dodge? Should we build the building, the new building behind Dodge, maybe on the old football field that when Dodge was a junior high, that football field was used all the time? The thing about doing that is, number one, you would have kids on a construction site. Not sure that's the best thing to do. But even greater than that is the concern that the land back there is not very stable. I'm to be told that it was built, the land back there is, is, is built on top of a very swampy uh, piece of property. Well, your sixth graders will be able to tell you because I've gone back there and did done the, uh, the, the outdoor science. Yeah. Stanley Stein will tell <laughs> right. you when he was here. There was there, there are vernal pools everywhere, which is another name for it's swampland. Yes, exactly. So it's not the most stable ground to build a brand new school. So last time we talked about the conceptual legacy project, we thought about maybe putting the school behind Twinsburg High School on the campus of the high school. Uh, back, if you think about the property, back where currently um, we have a parking lot that's across the street from the fitness center and there is a boys practice soccer field. During the conversation with the residents and, and lots of folks, staff members, during this first round of conceptual legacy project planning, the major concern that came forward was the traffic. Today, you drive up there at a arrival or dismissal just for the high school and you see how busy that, that campus is with only one way in and out of the campus. It's a problem. Add a whole other school on top of it, it would be very much of a challenge and so in, in talking with city folks and talking with staff members we thought oh, that's not the best place to put the new school so what else can we do and so this is where the idea was born to potentially build the new building where Tiger Stadium currently is and then to move Tiger Stadium on the property uh, that sits behind Twinsburg High School where we currently have a parking lot and a boys practice soccer field and a ninth grade baseball field um, and then I assume that you do traffic studies in all of this and um, right now Dodge is currently across the street from you know the high school and RB Chamberlain and, and the stadium so moving it directly across the street does that even affect traffic flow that much or do, do you know the outcome of your traffic study? We had just conducted a traffic study this past fall, and um, honestly, we did not include this in the project at that point. Uh, the scope was how does the traffic currently flow on property, and what can we do to improve uh, that? And so we would probably have to conduct a secondary traffic study to understand if there would be a drain, especially if you're thinking about RBC and Dodge currently have similar, not exact, start and ending time. You put the new school right next to RB Chamberlain Middle School, we may have some challenges with traffic that we have to work through. Well, and I know I just threw this out at you when we talked before the show, but there's all that land that borders 480. Uh -huh. And I often wondered if, you know, is that city owned land? Can you put almost like a marginal that runs along that? And I know that that wasn't part of your traffic study, but that I always wondered if, you know, adding another exit or making a marginal that goes, I guess, east towards the gas station, the get-go, or west towards, you know, the, the, the 271. Anyway, that was just something in my dumb head that I thought of. Well, no idea is considered um, foolish, right? I think we have to look at all ideas, and thank you for planting the seed on that one, because <laughs> you never know. Right now, that the, the drive that leads beyond where the stadium currently is is owned by the city of Twinsburg and actually their crews need that drive to get back to the secondary sure. service garage. So um, when building the school on that property, what we would have to work with with the city of Twinsburg is just understanding that we would be using that drive for school traffic. 
Okay, so as we review, we're, we're looking at, or you're proposing moving Dodge to the current site of Tiger Stadium, moving Tiger Stadium to the practice field behind the high school and fitness center. Mm -hmm. um, but with a high school comes parking and you know driveways and entrances, so that also affects some of the practice fields that are up front at RB Chamberlain. It would, it would affect Hoon Field, um, which is the girls' softball field that sits right in front of Tiger Stadium. So in this plan, what it would appear is that Hoon Field, the boys' practice soccer field, and the ninth grade baseball field would all be relocated onto the campus of, of Dodge, where Dodge currently sits, as well as the football practice field. We have a football practice field that sits behind Tiger Stadium right now. So we would have to find a location also on the Dodge property for that practice field. So ultimately, if, if we could dream big here, is the property of Dodge becomes really a community um, athletic field. Um, complex. Complex, basically, right? Now there are plans phase two to move transportation over across the street to Dodge and build a new garage where the current structure of Dodge is. Of course, that's phase two, and we're not talking about that right now. We just need to focus on phase one, which is building the new school. Just that, that has to remain our focus is the academic necessity to create a new learning environment that supports our students of today. Again, to review, phase one is the building of a new three-grade school on the site of Tiger Stadium mm -hmm. and moving Tiger Stadium. Correct. Those are the, those are the only two things in that and relocating the athletic fields that will need a new home because we need to use that property for the construction of the new stadium and the new school building. Um, and in phase two, is the only thing in phase two the possible moving of the garage, the maintenance garage, or are there more things that are possible in phase two? Well, the one thing that we have been working through um, is the expansion of our preschool. We are so excited that parents choose the Wilcox Preschool for their children's earliest learning um, environment. But what we have done over time now is we've expanded so much that Wilcox Primary School has limited elbow space for our smallest uh, tigers. And so the other part of phase two potentially may be taking a look at um, an expansion. What do we do for our early learning center? Should there be a construction of something else should it be an addition to Wilcox? Lots of questions with regard to phase two. Don't have any of those answers at this point in time. But really, I want the residents to understand that phase one is just the beginning of the legacy. Uh, more to come, more to follow. But this entire project is being built on what the residents are telling us they desire for our school community. And so I've been so excited about the number of folks that have met with um, us in little focus groups, little coffee clatches. And if I had one asked today is if there are residents who may not be affiliated with the district whose children have passed through our halls who are off to doing their, their best adult lives, could be a homeowners association, could be a chess club, could be a group of folks that meet up at McDonald's for coffee in the morning. If you'd like us to come and talk to you in greater detail about what this project is, happy to do it. Just call my office and we can make a time and a place and have a great conversation. So I wanted to jump back. Uh, we only have a few more minutes, but <clears throat> we all know that one of the, the side effects of COVID has been the cost of building, especially um, um, supply chains. Mm -hmm. What has that done to your initial estimate? It's surprising. It's about a 25% increase from 2018 to 2021 when the architects uh, ran the numbers again for us. So again, the cost of doing nothing is really very expensive. And so the time is right to do something, to have this idea finally come to fruition. But again, we can only do that through the, the support of the community. And the plan can only be the plan that the community supports. So um, very expensive. Uh, the supply chain situation isn't great. We understand that. Uh, but we can't wait any longer. It, you know, the project's been sidetracked a couple times. There are actually architectural renderings at the board office when there was an initial thought for a building. This predates me, this was in the 90s. 
There was a thought of a, a school being built on Chamberlain Road. There was a thought of a school being built on Corbett's Farm um, when all that uh, happened in our community. Um, so this is not a new idea. And beginning in 2016, we really started the diligent effort to try to build a plan that would be acceptable by the residents. It's time to get it done. It's time to invest in our children, not only the children of today, but those tigers we haven't even met yet. And we're just excited about the opportunity and hoping that we'll be supported by our residents. So that would that support would be um, would have to be a bond issue. Yes. Um, what kind of time frame are you suggesting, or is the district suggesting? Um, and where are we at now in the process? Are we still getting feedback? Um, and, and when is your sort of timeline to present something to the board? Great questions. So, you know, when we were talking through the Conceptual Legacy Project, we had hoped to tie a new building project on the end of the high school bonds. Um, the good news for our residents is that the high school bonds were paid off in December of 21. Great news, we can burn the mortgage. You know, the, the residents, the community now owns Twinsburg High School. That's banner news. Unfortunately, because of COVID and all the things that we had to manage during the last two years, we weren't focused on getting this project through because too many other things took priority. Sure. Um, so this uh, first part of the calendar year 2022, um, we are engaging in um, community discernment for the project, asking residents, does this plan meet your needs as a member of our community? Should it change? Are we not thinking of things that are important to you and your family? And then in the spring of this year, 2022, I'm to present to the Board of Education the findings of all of these meetings, all of this feedback we're gathering. Ultimately, the board will then determine the next step, and that's the hopeful inclusion of a bond on a, on a coming ballot. So how are you getting feedback now, now that we're in, you know, almost at the end of this stage, if, if people still have some feedback to give or want more information, uh, where do they go? Right, so we are on our website, we are actually adding um, a link called the Tiger Legacy Project. You can get it right off of the, the, the um, homepage of the district website. And information, including a PowerPoint, is there for residents to take a look at. Um, as I mentioned, happy to come out and engage any group of individuals if they'd wanna have a little conversation with me, happy to do that. Um, we are also planning a community meeting um, and inviting anybody who would like to come. It would be at Twinsburg High School. What I'm waiting for are some dates from Lesco Architects because really I need the, the folks who are smart about building projects there to answer the questions from the residents. So as soon as that date is confirmed, we'll post it on the website. I'll push it out through Blackboard Connect and hopefully we'll have a lot of community engagement at that meeting uh, as well as other opportunities throughout the spring. Well, if, uh, if Community Focus can help at all, please let us know. We are happy to help. Uh, this program hopefully will give some information to residents. Uh, you can find that. It will be posted on your website. Yes. It will be on the, uh, the My Community Focus app. Please, if you don't have that, if you have a Fire Stick or a Roku, um, even your phone, search for the My Community Focus app. It's the C logo with the red dot. You can watch this program. You can watch all of Kathy Power's superintendent shows from Twinsburg Schools today, as well as millions of other program. Uh, one other quick note, we are going to be um, live streaming your Board of Education meetings. Right. So we have finally you know, gotten uh, the equipment we need to live stream that on channel 1021 on Spectrum. And then we have always rerun them on Spectrum. So on channel 1022 or 1023, not 1021, uh, that's us. Um, so we have always rerun them. Now we are going to live stream them. So, um, and then on our uh, My Community Focus app, you will always see the current meeting and then it will re be replaced when a new meeting comes out. So uh, thank you for allowing us to do that. Absolutely. I think the more community engagement we have, the better. And folks like to watch live stream presentations now, so thank you for making it convenient for them. All right, well, thank you for watching. And please get more information at the Twinsburg website or watch this program again. Send the link to your friends. But most of all, support the schools.